Hello, greetings, and I hope you are doing well. I am Parth Deshpande, and I will be presenting our research titled "Analysis of Overtaking Maneuvers on Freight Corridors Considering Road and Vehicle Parameters." This is the outline of the presentation. We shall start with an introduction, analyze some existing models for PSD, and then get into the work itself, which has two parts. One is test runs in IPG truck maker, and the second is a proposed analytical model. Starting with a brief introduction. So in India, a lot of freight, which is over 60 percent, is carried by road, and it causes congestions on the national highways. To increase the capacity, it is proposed to have separate freight corridors. These corridors require significantly new geometric design standards. One such design parameter is the passing side distance, or PSD, which is important for overtaking maneuvers. The provision of a sufficient PSD avoids congestion and increases safety at the same time. It is also used in the development of advanced driver assistance systems, or ADAS. However, the current standards for PSD are designed only with the consideration of cars, and thus need to be reworked for freight corridors. So, as we see in the figure on the right, one of the first definitions of PSD had four components. So, D1 is the distance where the vehicle accelerates to its overtaking speed. D2 is the overtaking distance itself. D3 is the clearance between the passing and the oncoming vehicles, and D4 is the distance covered by the on during the overtake. Now the development of PSD started in 1976 and was then utilized by standards such as the Indian Roads Congress or IRC. The IRC, however, does not consider the component D3, which we saw in the earlier figure. There was further work in 1982 where the kinematics of vehicles were included, but the most significant work was done in 1988 by Glennon. This model considered the critical point, which is the point where the chances of overtaking or aborting the overtake are equal. And hence, this was adopted in the newer ASTRO standards. Further work was done in 1989 to obtain the minimum PSD required, which was essentially just D1 to from the figure which we saw earlier. After this point, no major work was done, and all the models which were there, such as the 1996 one which we see, had too many parameters to be calibrated. Summing up the gaps, so these existing models were limited to passenger cars only. And those which considered other vehicle classes only considered length as an additional parameter. None of these actually used any road or vehicle dynamics, and there was no universal agreement on which vehicle classes to use as well. And also, there hasn't been any development for freight corridors in terms of PSD. Based on this, we aim to analyze the PSD values from the current models and standards, and compare them with values from IPG Truck Maker, which is a vehicle simulation software. We will also look at the effects of different road and vehicle parameters on PSD, and propose an analytical model which can then provide PSD values which are closer to those from IPG Truck Maker. We will then extend this work to consider a slow-moving vehicle in an adjacent lane, which can also impede overtaking, and this has not been considered in present models. Moving on, so PSD for divided highways, as we see in the figure at the bottom, is usually considered as the minimum PSD, which is D1 plus D2. Thus, we start by measuring this PSD from IPG Truck Maker. At the top are the road and vehicle parameters considered, where the subject vehicle is a single unit truck, and the leader or leader, as we call it, is a tractor trailer unit. Now, this is a comparison between the minimum PSD values from IPG Truck Maker, Glennon's model, and the IRC standards, which are currently in use. The speed range considered is from 40 to 80 kilometers per hour. Which is typical for trucks on high-speed facilities. The speed differential between the impeder and the passer varies with respect to the speed, and this was first introduced in Glennon's model. So the same is kept here for better comparison. We can also see that the subject truck is smaller than the leader truck or the impeder, as the scenario of a smaller truck overtaking a larger one is more common. The resulting PSD values, as we see in the table, have very large differences. So around a 45% difference for Glennon's model, and over a 50% difference for the IRC standards with respect to the truck maker values. In this case, the values for both are lower than those from IPG Truck Maker, and actually providing a lower minimum PSD value poses a very high safety risk. Note that the IRC model here has an additional parameter which is D4. Despite having that component, its values are lower than those from IPG Truck Maker. If we compare Glennon's model with IPG Truck Maker at different road and vehicle parameters, we see a 56% difference at 6% longitudinal gradients, 
a nearly 55% difference at higher loading and it goes to around 60% for a truck with an electric powertrain. In the case of the electric powertrain, the powertrain capabilities themselves are different which creates this difference and in the case of the gradient and increased loading, the acceleration of the vehicle is affected. So based on these differences, we propose an analytical model for one of the most significant parts of PSD which is D2. Now while D1 can be obtained using a longitudinal acceleration model, D2 requires the consideration of the overtaking trajectory of the vehicle. In this case, literature shows that a cubic polynomial trajectory is the best approximation of a lane change maneuver and hence we will be using it here. Now in doing so, we apply two constraints on the trajectory. The first constraint comes from the curvature of the trajectory which is as seen in equation 1. This in turn depends on parameters like the steering angle limit of the vehicle, the lateral traction and the comfortable lateral acceleration which by the way is the only tuned parameter of this model. The next constraint is from the safe gaps which are maintained between the vehicles when overtaking. Now these are based on a car following model which uses the reaction time as shown in equation 2 and these safe gaps give the constraint on the overtaking distance by means of the total of the trajectory. And now that we have two constraints, we take the more conservative one of them in the interest of safety. Looking at some of the results from this analytical model, we see that the difference in the values of D2 is very low. So the highest one here is around 6.6% which is very close to the values from Truckmaker. Now this was done with a lateral acceleration of 0.5 meters per second square and a reaction time of 1.5 seconds. Now apart from this presented work, we also extended the same to consider a slow moving vehicle in an adjacent lane. But traditionally PSD is not defined for such a scenario. However, we find it important to include this in the context of freight corridors. And the key here is to consider the slow moving vehicle in a way similar to how the oncoming vehicle is considered in other PSD models. We already did some work analyzing PSD for an oncoming vehicle using the critical point model and we also developed an analytical model for the same uh, that has been adopted here. In the case of a slow moving vehicle however, things are way simpler and we simply provide a side distance which is equal to the required distance for a reverse lane change. So that is when the vehicle comes back to its original lane after overtaking. As seen in this figure, we have XP which is the overtaking distance and it uses constraints similar to what we presented earlier which are the curvature and gaps. Speaking of the gaps constraint, equation 3 here shows the length of the cubic polynomial trajectory which is used to enable this constraint. The other thing which we tried out here was modifying Lennon's critical point PSD model where we replaced the oncomer by a slow moving vehicle. So this essentially involves flipping the direction of motion of the vehicle in the adjacent lane. We also ran the test case in IPG truck maker to get those values as it has a higher order vehicle and driver model which is closer to real life scenarios. The table here shows a comparison between these values which are obtained from the modified Lennon's model IPG truck maker and the analytical model for the overtaking distance which we saw in the last slide. As we see here, simply modifying Lennon's critical point model does not work and it has values which are way different from the ones from IPG truck maker. But on the other hand, the analytical model can provide closer values based on the appropriate consideration of the lateral acceleration. Concluding the presentation, so we presented the analysis of existing PSD models, particularly for freight corridors and we also proposed an analytical model which could aid the development of reasonable standards for the freight corridors. We started by comparing the existing models with IPG truck maker. This was done for different road and vehicle scenarios and what we saw was huge differences between them. The analytical model which was proposed gave us closer values to IPG truck maker and the most important advantage of such a model is that it has the best of both worlds. So it has a physical basis as well and it has a few parameters which can be calibrated as well. So all in all providing sufficient PSD can reduce congestion and increase safety as well as logistic efficiency. So it is very important to consider it in the context of designing freight corridors. The further scope for development includes modeling D1 using a vehicle acceleration model and adopting the system for potential applications in ADAS and autonomous vehicles. These are the references cited and thank you very much for attending the presentation.